Today on TWIP Apps, AstroPad turns your iPad Pro into a pro drawing tablet. If you've ever tried to paint, draw, or retouch in an app like Photoshop using the mouse, then you know how cumbersome it can be. The drawing tablet is the long-loved tool of professional image makers, allowing them to incorporate pressure, tilt, and natural hand movements into their work. Tablets, though, are expensive and take some getting used to while you learn to paint over here but watch over there. Tablets that allow you to paint directly on the screen are incredibly expensive, or at least they were until now. If you own an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, then you're just one app away from a whole new brushing experience. I'm Photo Joseph, and this is TWIP Apps. Welcome to another episode of TWIP Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today's guest is Matt Runge from the company Astro HQ to show off their iOS app called AstroPad. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming on. So tell us a little bit about the company Astro HQ before we get into what the product itself is. How big are you guys? Where are you based? Yeah, so we're, uh, we're a pretty small company. There are uh, five of us. Uh, we're based in uh, San Francisco and okay. Minneapolis. And uh, we neighbors. make, uh, <laughs> yeah, we make digital, uh, digital creative tools. Excellent. Do you have other products besides AstroPad that we'll be looking at? No, today? just AstroPad right now. Okay, excellent. So how long have you guys been in business now? We have been um, about three years. Uh, we've had we've been working on AstroPad for about three years at this point. We've had AstroPad out for about a year and a half. Okay, very good. Well, at this point, I'm sure a lot of people are going, "What is AstroPad?" So yeah. give us the <laughs> give us a high level overview. We're obviously going to get into a demo and see it up close. Sure. But what is yes. AstroPad? So what AstroPad does is it turns the uh, iPad Pro into or any iPad for that matter. Most of the time now it's iPad Pros, but it turns any iPad into a graphics tablet or pen display for the computer. So this is really something that you can use with your Mac in place of like a Wacom tablet, um, anything like the Wacom Intuos or the Wacom Cintiq tablets. Now the Cintiq is the one where you have the, the screen on the tablet. You're actually drawing on a screen itself, right? Yep, and that's exactly what we do with AstroPad too, is that's we mirror the Mac screen right onto the iPad so you can draw right on the surface of it, right into whatever kind of Mac app you'd like to use. That's incredible. So what is the basic setup required? Obviously, you have to have a Mac and an iPad. What software-wise, you must have something running on both sides of it? Yeah, so there's, a, there's an app that runs on the uh, Mac, and then we also have an app that runs on the iPad. And you just launch both of them, and they'll connect together. They can connect either via uh, USB or uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi is particularly nice because you get this this um, you know graphic tablet that's totally like a Cintiq, really. That's wireless. You can put in your lap and work with, or work from the couch, wherever you like. So as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can be anywhere in the same building. On the same, yeah. Just as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Excellent. And then if you're on the Wi-Fi versus a connected uh, hard line, is there any kind of latency you have to worry about? You know, it depends on the Wi-Fi network. On a really good Wi-Fi network, the difference isn't very noticeable, uh, but you will get uh, faster and more reliable performance plugged in over USB. Sure, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so we're going to take a look. We've got a, a special configuration for today's show. Usually we have two computers connected for our demos, but today we've got three because we have us, of course, yeah. two separate devices. Uh, so we're going to try and get through this without showing the wrong screen at any given time. Uh, where do we want to go first? Because you're going to you're going to show us. I know you've already installed the software. But you're going to show us some basic basic setup on uh, on each system. Yeah, you know, we could start with um, the uh, the Mac actually. Okay. And. Um, All right. I just show how uh, we start on the Mac. I launch AstroPad on the Mac, and then okay. we can jump over to the iPad, and you can see how it mirrors the okay. mirrors the screen. Great. All right. Well, we are looking at your Mac now, so go ahead. Yeah. So here's my Mac, and I've got uh, Photoshop up. And then what um, what we do is you can launch the AstroPad Mac app. And I actually have this set up as like the first run experience. Um, you don't see this this every time you run it, but this is the first that's setting you through how to how to set it up. Great. And um, it'll walk you through instructions on um, 
how to where to get the iPad app, how to install it. And uh, just one second here. There we go. Uh, so I can go here to set up. You know, it'll walk me through getting the, the iPad app. We actually have an iPhone version, too, that I should mention. The iPhone version um, is free. It's a great way to try it out on, like, a uh, iPhone 6S Plus with a pretty large large screen to kind of get a feel for it. I mean, you can't okay. use Apple Pencil. Um, right. and it's not great with styles, but it's at least something to experiment with Astropad and get an idea how it would work before purchasing the, the iPad version. Okay, cool. So, so this this kind of walks you through getting it set up, and then and then what I do is on the um, on the iPad side, I've already got Astropad installed on my iPad, but then I just go ahead and launch it. Okay, so we're now looking at the iPad. I've switched over to that. Yeah, we're looking at the iPad now. It's it's prompting my Mac to allow the connection, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to allow that connection. And uh, there it goes. Now it's mirroring. Uh, let me cancel out of this. And um, now I've got, uh, I'm mirroring, in fact, my entire uh, Mac setup right onto my iPad here. Okay, so uh, viewers, just to make sure you understand what you're looking at, on the left-hand side, in the top or left corner, you're seeing a mirror of the iPad screen. And on the bottom right, we're seeing his Mac. Right. So let me jump here into Photoshop to make it a little clearer. So here I've got my, um, my iPad Pro, and I've got an Apple Pencil. And I can just go and, and just draw right here. Let me get this in camera here. I can just draw on the surface of this and it's going right into um, Photoshop, you know, so it's really, and it's really natural too. I get full pressure sensitivity just like you would with a, a full Wacom tablet. Um, I can, you know, write something out here. Uh, and uh, we even have for brushes with tilt, we even send tilt information from the Apple Pencil. Really? All the way to the Mac, yeah. So that's that's really cool and really uh, pretty fun as well. Now, obviously, the software has to support it that you're working with. So Photoshop would have the tilt tools. So that's somewhere where you can do that. Yep, Photoshop would. Um, re to the Mac, we really appear as any other graphic tablet. So any software that supports uh, the graphic tablet, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be just Photoshop. Um, you know, Lightroom, Sketchbook Pro, Pixelmator, anything that you would typically use a Wacom tablet for, uh, will work with Astropad. We'll get full pressure sensitivity. Okay. And you can even, I mean, it doesn't have to be something that you would want to use a stylus for. You could use it in your email if you wanted to. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. You, you really could. Yeah, I could bring up any of the Mac apps here um, and, and jump jump right into that too. It really is just mirroring my Mac screen. Like I can I can bring a Finder window up here. Um, you know, and just kind of drag that around. Okay, so in there we're seeing a bit of latency in the Finder windows, but when we were drawing in uh, in Photoshop, it seemed like it was completely real time. Yeah, so that's and that's what's unique about what we've done is we've really optimized for the the drawing like a stylus input experience. Mm -hmm. So some things like larger changes won't be as fast, but for things like drawing with the stylus, we've really optimized to make that a good experience and make so it as low latency and as real time as we can possibly be. So that makes sense. So basically it's about the amount of changes that are happening on screen. Moving a big window around, that's a lot of data to change, a lot of pixels that are changing, but drawing is not. Yeah, and there's there's a couple of things that are unique to us. You know, the the engine that underlies and powers Astropad we call our liquid engine, and it's optimized for this kind of stylus input. And you'll also notice that the image quality is really, really good on here. And so we've gone to great lengths to make sure that at all times we can keep up really great image quality. I mean, that's mm -hmm. super important, of course, for artists, designers, and photographers. You, wanna, you don't want to see a pixelated or a, a copy of what you're working on that has a lot of artifacts on it. You want to mm -hmm. see the actual representation of the photo or the art and the design you're working on. So that's unique to us. And we've also gone to great lengths to make sure that when I touch that stylus to the screen, you're getting that instantaneous feedback. Nice. Very cool. Can you show us some of the, the kind of tilt and pressure things? Will that really, this should translate pretty well showing that. Yeah. Through. So let I'm going to go to just the iOS screen. So that's what we're looking at now. Yeah. Let me uh, pull up here. Let's see if I can find. Um... Oh, I see. You're okay. You're looking for a different brush over on the Mac. Yeah. So now... I'm trying to grab a different brush here. There's a, there's an animator brush. That's really good for tilt. Um, and photo blue pencil. So it? what we're looking at now, if we are looking back at the Mac screen, you can tell because of the dock down in the bottom. Yeah. Um, and, me, if I, uh, and if I switch back over to the iOS screen, 
you can see, of course, it's the exact same thing. You see a little bit of a, a little difference there because you're seeing the circle. I guess, of course, you are seeing the dock on the bottom here as well, aren't you? Um, so it can, be, it can be a little tricky with just for this <laughs> yeah, demo going back and forth, knowing which side you're uh, looking at. So this is a, you know, I just switched to another pencil. I don't, I don't see the uh, the animator one is what I was looking for with the tilt. Okay. But this one, you can see more the difference in pressure as I okay sure go here um, with different some different lines and strokes. Absolutely. Um, you know, as I'm right in here. Uh, so yeah, that translates in. And what was the there's a sidebar that slid out at some point that gave you yeah, some access so, to some tools. So, you know, to show you a few other things in here, there is a sidebar that slides out, and this is where we keep a bunch of uh, frequently used stuff. This is just like the sidebar on, like, a traditional graphics tablet. You can customize this to be whatever you'd like it to be. Okay. Um, for example, here we've got undo and a redo. I can just tap that, or I can change the brush size really easily. And, you know, you can just configure that to however you like. Um, and I see also at the top there it shows drawing with a finger or with a pencil. So you have, well, obviously different reactions, but what else can you do with that little toggle? Yeah, there? so that's, um, we, we've built a special uh, palm rejection mode into Astropad okay. that's that's better than pretty much any other drawing app I've, I've used in terms of palm rejection. And that is because we flip it into a pencil-only mode, and then we're looking specifically for a pencil. So it's really nice when you're you're working here in Photoshop. You don't have to worry about uh, stray, um, you know, stray from your palm, mm -hmm. adding strokes. Like you'll notice that if you use like Apple's Notes app a lot with the uh, the stylus, you'll start to see some some stray marks from your your palm. So that's a that's a special palm rejection mode we put on. So it's basically um, another, it's it's a mode. It's an advanced mode, but you have to manually enable it. You're saying you're telling it, hey, I'm in pencil mode now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and okay, so, it'll actually, if it senses the pencil touching onto the iPad Pro screen, it'll actually yeah. jump over into that mode automatically, and oh, it'll great. let you know it's doing that. Okay. Um, but that's something we try to do automatically to optimize the experience. Okay. And then when you, if you want to touch the screen, once you're in that pencil mode, will it respond to touch or do you have to go back to you know, finger mode? Yeah. So that's a good question. It'll, um, it won't respond. So if I do an individual touch here with my mm -hmm. finger, you can see it's telling me that it's, it's rejecting that touch oh, okay. um, versus, versus if I do here with the, um, with a stylus. But what does work is we do have support for pull full, uh, pan and zoom here. So I can just use two fingers and uh, kind of move around okay. here and move around my canvas as I'd like. So you're in pencil mode. It's only going to respond to the pencil as far as actually laying down ink on the paper, but you can still use your fingers to navigate the page, navigate right, the uh, right. canvas. Right. Awesome. It'll try to detect that and allow you to move and pan like that. Okay. Um, some other interesting things um, to show off here is this right here to hide and show the sidebar. We've made this uh, fully customizable so I can drag this and put this anywhere around the screen I want to get it out of my way. Okay. Then I can just tap it to hide that. Another thing is we have these cool modifier keys that we can bring up. And uh, these are really great uh, for for some things in, in Photoshop. Like I don't have a photo up right now, but for example, if I was using the heel tool and I wanted to pick the source, or in this case, it'll do a color picker if I hold down option. Or uh, okay. uh, if I draw with uh, shift, it'll, uh, let's see, I changed my color there. But um, All right, you sampled the background. There you yeah, go. I sampled the white. That doesn't help me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I can draw a straight line here if I hold down shift. Um, so those Very are really cool. handy, nice modifier keys that you can pull sure. up there as well. And then the other thing we do is right now I'm mirroring the whole screen. But I flip over into move and zoom here. And I, I can actually move around my Mac screen. And this is really great for when you're working off a really large Mac screen and you're not looking at all of it at once. So I can, you know, go in here or maybe I want to just focus on the canvas here and I want to just get in real close. Uh, or I can bounce back here to uh, full screen. Very clever. So, so, you so can that's really another thing that's, that's really handy, especially for when you're wireless and you're working from the couch and you need to reach some other part of your Mac. Okay. That's fantastic. So, yeah, so if you're on a 27-inch iMac and a smaller yeah. iPad, that may, uh, may be a hard thing to see all at once, but this allows you to really zoom in quite literally to see it. That's great. Yeah, no, no exactly. And, you know, we really encourage um, our users to put their most common uh, used shortcuts right on the side here on the sidebar. 
Uh, but for other things that you don't need as frequently, you can use the move and zoom mode. And we've even included a uh, shortcut where if I put this, this ring, if I hold it down, it'll very quickly put me in move and zoom mode. So I can jump around here and just, you know, if I had to get to a menu. Gotcha. I'm going to go back here to full screen. Very nice. Yeah, so that's a look at uh, Astropad here in Photoshop. I mean, like I said, it doesn't work just with uh, Photoshop. I can also pull up Lightroom here. And the cool thing here, too, as you can see me, I was just reaching for my Mac, is I can do stuff on my Mac that makes more sense and use the iPad Pro for other tasks that it's more comfortable to use a stylus for. So if you uh, get away from the idea of sitting on the couch and it is more just you're sitting at your desk, you have a nice big screen in front of you, your big iPad Pro that you want to use like you'd use a Cintiq, something you can draw, yeah. but you still yeah. have your keyboard, you still have your mouse, you still have everything else there. It's just another tool in front of you. Yep, totally. And we have a lot of users that like to use it that way for their really fast, efficient workflows, both, um, you know, illustrators and photographers. Well, some will right. even have like a Bluetooth keyboard off to the side, you know, tap a keyboard on the key and then on the right side have their... Uh, the stylus drawing with the Apple Pencil right under the iPad Pro. So you know, it's funny for and when hearing that, who's thinking that just sounds crazy? I mean, it's you can you can add a lot of inputs going at once on a Mac, and it it may seem bizarre, but if you get used to that, it can be an incredibly effective way to work. And for me personally, in my main workstation, I've got a keyboard in front of me, the mouse on the right, and a trackpad on the left, and I'll scroll and pinch and zoom with my left hand while navigating with my right or hitting the keyboard with my right, and then there's a tablet up in front of me as well. Up, up yeah, above. yeah. So which I don't go to as often, but uh, but it's there. And I'm definitely gonna have to try this because I could put my iPad Pro in front of me there, grab my Apple Pencil instead of the stylus and go for it. That's uh, that's really effective. Yeah, totally. And it's amazing for folks that are really used to it, how fast they can work too uh, in something like Photoshop or Lightroom and, yeah. and see how fast they're doing retouching or illustration and they're just jumping back and forth. And you know, and if there's something they need to type out, they'll just go on their Mac, type it out quick, jump back to right. their iPad Pro and, and keep working. Even hitting it's, those keyboard uh, shortcuts, the keyboard's right there, you can hit that quick. Yeah, hit, yeah. Hit the B key to bring the brush up or whatever you need, yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it works It works really well. And you know, like here, I've, I've brought up Lightroom. Um, and what's cool too is those gestures I showed you, like in the Photoshop canvas. Mm -hmm. I mean, they work in more than just the Photoshop canvas. Here, I'm just scrolling through some pictures here. Um, and I could, uh, well, let's see. Let's uh, let's grab one of these. I could uh, grab this here. I can go here into develop mode, and then just even you know, here's an example. This would be convenient on the couch. You're just working through changing the temperature and exposure and contrast on on some of the pictures, and then it's really great for things like the um, exposure brush, where I can just get in here and you now that brush is a little small, so I'm gonna <laughs> bump that up. But where I can I can work and just like go through yeah, here yeah. and work on adjusting the exposure mm -hmm. uh, for things like that that is just way more natural. Also, the um, uh, clone and heal tool is really a uh, really great way to work with the stylus. Now you're getting pressure sensitivity in Lightroom as well, correct? Yep, you get full pressure sensitivity in Lightroom. Great. Yeah, so that's really. Uh, uh, Really a pretty cool way to work. And the other thing, too, is I should show you on the Mac here kind of how you can customize Astropad to fit your workflow here, too, is okay. that um, on the Mac here. So now we're looking at just the Mac screen. Yeah. So on the Mac, there's some extra settings. And here I'm going to go into the uh, preferences. And I can totally customize those application-specific uh, shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So let's say I wanted to change it for Lightroom. For example, for Lightroom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it a bit here. I'm going to change this to be able to go to full screen quickly. And I want before and after because that's something I like to use. And so now on my iPad, I've got those shortcuts. And so it's cool in that I can, I can just go here. You know, I'm working with the exposure brush. I'm doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, let me just make it, uh, let me just, let me just change it to make it really, sure, really obvious here. Uh, no, that's not what I want. That's the mask. Let's go, uh, let's change the overall temperature, you know. And now I can just hit before and after here in the uh, flip back and forth quick, just like you would on a, on a real, uh, a regular physical uh, graphics tablet. Absolutely. Nice. Very good. So you can use it like a tablet 
for basically any app, no matter what you're anything, uh, yeah. what you're doing, whether you want to do it in mail or obviously design for things like Photoshop, Lightroom's great. Anywhere you got the pressure sensitive and tilt, and like you said, you said it, basically anywhere where the Mac would normally see or any app that would see a tablet, it's going to see this just as if it's seeing a tablet. Yeah, yeah. So I can even bring up, uh, you know, another. I don't. I'm not actually a Pixelmator user myself, but I can bring that up here, and I can uh, drag in my photo here. And now I am in uh, Pixelmator, and I think I just have okay. So I just have a brush turned on right now, um, but you know I can, if I was doing some retouching, I could do that in sure. uh, in Pixelmator just like anything else. And you can see it's getting full pressure uh, sensitivity, just like Photoshop and Lightroom as well. Right. Very good. Fantastic. Well, I, that's uh, pretty straightforward. It's a very clearly a very very useful app for anyone who's got a iPad and wishing that they could afford that Cintiq because those things are uh, those are not cheap, are they? Yeah, no, they're they're thousands. I mean, you get a um, a small Cintiq for a thousand dollars, and the the larger ones, the twenty seven inch ones, will set you two three thousand dollars back. Okay. Uh, so in this case, you can just take your iPad, and you don't. As I said, you don't even have to have an iPad Pro. We also work with all the third party styluses on the market. So if you wanted mm -hmm. to work on a an iPad two or later, we'll also work there as well. Oh, interesting. It seems like it seems quite a performance draw. Does that really work that well on an iPad too? You know, it depends um, depends on what you're doing. Um, for some simple retouching stuff, it could be okay for um, an iPad too. But if it's something you're going to be working on all day long, uh, I would really encourage the iPad Pro. Um, sure. The Apple Pencil is just fantastic as well. Oh yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Very good. You know the. Um, and a lot of this stuff really comes into its own in, in Photoshop too, where you can do a lot of the rich stuff with brushes and um, blur layers and color burns and those sorts of things in Photoshop. Very good. All right, well, one thing that we haven't hit on yet was the price. What does this uh, app combo yeah. cost? Yeah, so Astropad is uh, available on the App Store for uh, $29.99. Okay. And that's, you're buying the iOS version or the Mac version? You're buying the iOS version, and the Mac version is available as a free download. Got it. And you said it works on, uh, even on your iPhone? The, yeah, the iPhone one is a, uh, is a free version that you can, you can start with and experiment with. That's uh, neat. Yeah, like you said, it's a great way to just see what it looks like, get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's, it, you know, it can be a lot of fun in something like Photoshop, too, where here I just brought this up in Photoshop, and... Um, I can do things like here. Here's an example where I'd use both the Mac and the uh, and the tablet here. So let's say I'm going to do. Uh, let's see what am I going to do here. I'll do a surface blur. Let me duplicate that layer. So viewers, the difference you're seeing in the colors here. Uh, I'm primarily, I'm going to say this is either Skype or because we're looking at different types of screens, of course, Mac and iPad. Yeah, um, there's actually a couple factors here and the difference in the colors. One is because of the way we're um, streaming the iPad onto the Mac, so you can see it in Skype. That's actually affecting the colors. Um, right. Co color and, um, is, is one thing we're very serious about, too. We've gone to great lengths to make sure that things are color, color calibrated as well between your Mac and your iPad. So unfortunately, okay. you're not able to quite able to see that right now. Okay, but in real world use, the colors are as yeah. close as close as they possibly can be to each other. Yep, yep. So, you know, here is I just did a blur layer. And so now this is the kind of example where, um, you know, it can be really fun to do retouching with. Uh, so I did a surface blur, put a layer on top. And this is the kind of thing where it's really, really great to have pressure sensitivity. I can just turn that on here and work mm -hmm. to... Uh, mm -hmm. Blend it in very naturally. I mean, this would be nearly impossible to do with a mouse. Oh, for sure. And, and this kind of stuff is, is just tons of fun. Very nice. All righty. Well, I think, is there anything else that we need to take a look at within the uh, software itself? No, that just about does it for, uh, for Astropad. Okay. Well, super. Thanks so much for uh, bringing that on. That is definitely a very, very useful app. It's a... Uh, kind of thing that anybody who's doing any type of brush work should definitely consider. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, check it out. Too, if, as if you think about your, your most people traveling who've got 
the gadgets. They might be traveling with their laptop and their iPad for sure, but adding the Wacom tablet into their travel bag is just one more thing that yeah, maybe you don't want to take. So this gives you the ability to have that tablet with you on the road as well. Well, and especially with a lot of the, the Wacom tablets, when you're using them, they're... Um it requires a learning curve too, where you have to learn how you've, you've got a blank tablet and you have to learn you're moving it here and I'm moving the mouse on the screen. There's this very strange hand-eye coordination. Sure. And so now with something like Astropad, you can even, as you said, take it on the road, but it's like a portable Cintiq on the road. You don't right. have to relearn that hand-eye coordination to do the retouching. Right, absolutely. Love it. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to the part of the show now where we get into our guest app pick and uh, as our viewers know this is uh, an app that is the guest's favorite app that of course it cannot be their own so any photo related app that isn't made by your company <laughs> sure, what, sure. Uh, so, what might that be for you so for me it would be the uh, manual app on uh, iphone it allows you to mess with you know aperture and shutter speed and um, a bunch of other settings that you normally would on a uh, digital slr and I think it's fun to get away from the automatic, uh, you know, automatic capture that the iPhone does and get a chance sure. to play around with those settings like a, like a digital SLR. So it gives you control over the ISO, over the shutter speed, yeah. the aperture, white balance even? Yeah, d yeah, white balance too. Very good. And people can find more about that at shootmanual.co.co. And of course, on the App Store as well. Do you know if that's on Android as well, or if that's an iOS only app? I don't know if that's on Android. I think it's iOS only, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And we didn't say this in the beginning, but I think it's it's fairly straightforward, fairly obvious. Your app, Astropad, is iOS only. There's not an Android version. Yeah, we we are iOS only, and you also do need a Mac uh, to use Astropad as well. Okay, fair enough. Right on. Well, thank you very much. Well, that brings us to the end of the guest portion of our show. Thanks so much for coming on. I'm going to drop you off here for a moment, um, but don't go anywhere. I'll come back and say goodbye before we, before we hang up completely. All right. Thanks. Well, there you have it, folks. AstroPad for your iOS device, specifically for your iPad Pro. Obviously, as, as we saw here, that's something that we really want to be focusing on. If you've got, a, uh, if you've got the iPad Pro and you got the pencil, this is a great app to use along with your Mac and to use with an app like Photoshop or really anywhere where you're using the brush. Uh, even even basic retouching inside of Lightroom, having the, the brush there, that pencil makes a big difference versus trying to just do it with your mouse. So certainly something worth considering. And uh, as we heard, you can get this on your iPhone as well, just to give it a try and see how it looks. Not Really not too many uh, too many downsides here. You know, the, the color difference that we're seeing, as we explained, is really just due to the Skype connections and the way that we're having to share the screens across. So to try it out and see how accurate the colors are. I think you're going to want to download that free trial onto your iPhone, check it out, and uh, make sure that it's going to do what you want it to do. But otherwise, I think this looks like a pretty interesting app. Definitely the kind of thing that will save you a lot of money if you're considering looking at a Cintiq or even just a regular Wacom tablet. It'll give you the capabilities of doing that for uh, for just $30. So quite a bargain when you look at it that way. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Twip Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph, as well as on my website at photoapps.expert. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and to visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com where you can sign up for our email list to be notified of new episodes and to get exclusive subscriber bonuses. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you're watching on our website, you can subscribe to the show using the subscribe box on this page. If you have feedback, suggestions, or comments about the show, you can reach me, Photo Joseph, directly by using our contact form. Just click on the Contact Us menu item at the top of the page. And finally, if you're a developer and would like to be a guest on the TWIP Apps show, click that same Contact Us button at thisweekinphoto.com and let us know what you've got. And with that, it's time to put your lens cap back on and go edit some photos. <laughs>